Hello everyone and welcome back. During the last holiday season we had a lot of new guardians jumping into the world of Destiny for the first time, and this year is no different. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's definitely been an influx of low-level players. Now, the number one comment I've gotten from friends and coworkers playing the game for the first time is that the game can be a little overwhelming when giving you all of the quests. Now, there's no doubt that the questification of the entire game has been one of the biggest quality of life improvements in Destiny. However, it can still be a little overwhelming to new players. Even as a year one veteran jumping into the Taken King, I was myself a little overwhelmed at how many different quests are dumped onto you at the same time. So here's a quick guide for those new players wanting to experience Destiny's quote-unquote campaign or main story missions. Work. You're alive. You don't know how long I've been looking for you. I'm a ghost. Actually, now I'm your ghost. And you? Well, you've been dead a long time. So you're going to see a lot of things you won't understand. Now the first quest you're given is a Titan slash Hunter slash Warlock Rises. That is of course going to depend on your class, but all the quests are exactly the same. This first quest is designed as a tutorial showing you the gameplay and introducing you to some different parts of the tower. The first main story quest is called Nothing Left But The Fall. During the steps of this quest, you will encounter your first alien race, the Fallen. The Fallen have all but taken over the Cosmodrome, and you are tasked with pushing back the darkness. Once you get towards the end of that questline, you can start against the Hive. This next quest will send you to the moon to investigate the next alien race, you guessed it, the Hive. After finishing that quest, you will start Fruit of the Garden. This quest will send you to Venus and Mars, where you will encounter the Vex and the Cabal. Now, for the most part, you should be gaining one level per mission. This ensures that you will always be strong enough to take on the next mission. However, that might not be the case after level 7 or 8. You might notice yourself just shy of being able to take on the next mission. If this happens, I highly recommend picking up some bounties and jumping into the Crucible. You can also jump off the beaten path and do some miscellaneous quests. Finish Fruit of the Garden and you have just completed all of the content that was released with Destiny September 9th, 2014. Now, of course, I haven't mentioned Destiny's first raid, The Vaults of Glass. Now, there isn't a whole lot of incentive from a gear standpoint to playing it, but I still highly recommend it. It will introduce you to the concept of raids, as well as test your gameplay and communication skills. Raids in general are some of the most rewarding experiences in Destiny, and you don't want to pass it up. The next quest to accomplish is called The Dark Below. This quest was originally released as the first expansion for the game last December. You'll meet Eris Morn and she'll have you go back to the moon to investigate the return of Crota. Crota is a Hive Prince and son of Oryx, the Taken King. Crota, son of Oryx. He took everything from me. He will turn his eyes to Earth, and only a true weapon of the light can stop his wrath. The Dark Below experience culminates with Destiny's second raid, Crota's End. Crota's End is a bit more chaotic and less technically challenging. However, it's still a ton of fun and I definitely recommend playing it. After the Dark Below, you've got the House of Wolves, which was originally released as the second expansion for the game. They met that mercy. With betrayal. Now, they will feel my wrath. In this quest, you will return to the Reef and assist the Awoken in defeating the House of Wolves, one of the faction houses of the Fallen. Instead of a raid for the House of Wolves, we got the Prison of Elders. The Prison of Elders is a three-player, multi-round sort of horde mode where you take on wave after wave of enemies. It can be pretty challenging and some of the rewards might still be relevant today. Finish up House of Wolves and you've just completed everything we've got in Year 1 of Destiny. That's a grand total of six questlines. Literally everything else is new to Year 2. And the first quest from that content I recommend doing is the Taken King. In the Taken King, you square off with Crota's father, Oryx. Oryx is none too pleased and is ready to exact his revenge. This quest will send you all over the solar system, including a new destination, Oryx's ship, the Dreadnought. He smells the blood of his son. On your hands.
After defeating the first step in the Taken King, I actually recommend pausing that quest and jumping into your subclass quest which should have just become available. Return to the tower and talk to your vanguard handler. They will then give you the quest that starts you down the path to get your third subclass. For the Hunter, it's called the Night Stalker's Trail. For the Warlock, it's called the Stormcaller's Path. And for the Titan, it's called the Sunbreaker's Challenge. Once you attain your third subclass, you can resume the Taken King quest. After finishing the Taken King, I recommend picking up a Broken Will, which will get you your first sword. But before you unlock that quest, you're going to have to complete the Vanguard's Hand. This is a short two-step quest that will unlock the Dreadnought as a destination, which you will need to complete the sword quest. After getting your first sword, I recommend starting the Taken War. This is a series of quests sending you to Earth, Mars, and Venus, investigating the remnants of Oryx. Finishing those quests will give you the road to King's Fall. And finishing that quest will leave you perfectly suited to take on the raid King's Fall. Now the rest of the quests are completely optional, but I highly recommend doing them as they will net you some of the most coveted weapons in the game. Hopefully that helps you figure out which quests you want to accomplish first. Now if you want some more tips that'll help you through your adventures, be sure to check out my other video titled 5 Tips for Glimmer and Glory. Drop a like if you can and subscribe for more Destiny content. And until next time, I'll see you guys starside.